A little journey, a, a two-week series, Travelling Light, or Travel Light. And today we're going to look at uh, getting rid of distractions, but let us pray. Father, we just take a few moments now just to bow in your presence. Lord, may we hear from you. Speak, Lord, use me. To share a thought, to share a word, to share an insight, a revelation from you, Lord God, as we consider this thought of travelling light through life. Lots of things weigh us down, lots of things distract us, there's been hurt, there's been disappointment, but Lord, help us to travel light with you, focused on you. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our hope. In Jesus' name, Amen. So this morning my simple title is, Don't Get Distracted. Oh, I'm sorry. Every day, every week, there's the potential, isn't there? Unlimited potential for us to get off track, for us to get distracted. We start in this thing and then we go and move on to that thing and there's lots of things in our world let's get rid of physical clutter and mental clutter I looked up a definition of distraction a pulling apart a separating a drawing of the mind in different directions I'm sure that's been no one here no, good. No. if you're a follower of Jesus Every evil force is trying to distract you. Divide your heart. Discourage your soul. Disengage your faith. And create division. The devil doesn't need to destroy us. He just needs to distract us. And get us off course. And off task. In Luke chapter 10, we have the, the story of Mary and Martha, quite familiar probably to most of us, and picking up around verse 38, up there for you, it may appear. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to him. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She was sorting out the food, she was cutting this, she was boiling that, she was getting the tables ready, she was making sure the nice crockery was out, she was getting everything sorted, but she got a little bit frustrated with her sister. And, if, and we continue to pick up that reading in Luke 10, 38 to 42. <laughs> She comes to Jesus and asks, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you were worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. And it will not be taken away from her. Martha wasn't doing something bad. I thank God for people like Martha. You eat on time, the bills are paid, the house is organised, things are done. It's great. Martha's are fantastic. We love them. Martha wasn't doing something wrong or bad. But she needed to make the better choice. So often the most difficult choices aren't between good and bad, but between good and better and best. Make the best response. Have the best reaction. Let us diminish the distractions in life. In 1 Corinthians 7.35 we read, I'm saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you, 
I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best with, a, with as few distractions as possible. Serve the Lord best with few distractions. The most common distractions in our daily life, friends, are at times mobile devices. You know, the Father, Son and the Holy Phone. Anyone? Uh, we've got a few of them running here at the moment. <laughs> Facebook, news sites, emails, text, Netflix, YouTube. Oh, that's just me. Oh, all these things are there. Video games, all these things are there to distract us. Let us focus on the important things. Focus on what matters. Say no to the good and say yes to the best. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 25 and 26, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in your ways. Let your eyes look ahead. Fix your gaze. Don't get distracted. Look straight ahead. Ignore the things that are trying to distract you and creep in. Have a fixed purpose in life as we follow Christ. Remember Peter, he walked on the water. As he stepped out of the boat, it became nice and firm, but the wind and the waves were swirling around. Jesus is right in front of him. He got distracted. He got fearful. He started to sink, and Jesus reached out his hands and picks him up. Don't let the things of this world be a distraction to us. They can weigh us down. Let us travel light throughout our days. Let us be people who are generous. Let us be people who are spontaneous. Let's do a random act of kindness. Pray for, pay or pray if you want to, for somebody behind you. Give careful thought to where your feet are heading. Where are your feet heading in this life? What choices are you making? What decisions are you choosing to make? Listen to the voice of God. You know, Isaiah 30, verse 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right, or when you turn to the left. This is the way, walk in it. That might be all you know, that might be all you've got from the Lord, but you've taken that step and you've moved forward. We're not going to let the noise of this world distract us from the voice of God. Let God refresh your soul. Lead you along paths of peace, not places of noise and destruction. Let Him prompt you, correct you, nudge you, guide you along the paths and roads of life. Three promises from God. I will protect you. I am your strength. I will answer. I will protect you up there on the screen from Isaiah 54. I will protect you. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. I am your strength. Maybe you need that today. Maybe you'll need that in the coming week. Maybe you need it yesterday. 
but I am your strength. From Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. God's promise to us, I will answer. I will answer. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call to me. Call to me. And I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. God will answer us. He wants to do a great work in me, in you, in us. As we be his church, as we be his people, as we're focused and moving forward, not getting distracted by the noise of this world. Remember Elijah? He was in a cave in 1 Kings 19. He's scared, he's depressed, he doesn't know what's going on. And the Lord said to him, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came the gentle whisper of God. Before God had been in the fire, God had been in the wind, God had been in the earthquake. But now, friends, He was a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. Don't miss the gentle whisper of God. Because you're always looking for the fantastic, the miraculous, the dramatic, but maybe... You need to listen and not be distracted so you can hear the gentle whisper of the voice of our living God. Because life is too valuable and our God is too good. Don't waste your life. Live your best life now. Don't live it on what if street or if only. Live your best life now. You want to be successful? Craig Rochelle, up on the screen there. A quote from him. Success isn't just some goal. We achieve in the future. Success is being faithful to God today. Success isn't just some goal. We achieve in the future. Success has been faithful to God today. Be faithful to Him. Let us travel light through life. God bless you. Amen.